Hi, this is just a quick little uh, video on some tips when making uh, smart bone dials. So here I've got a number of smart bones that I use to control the facial expressions and I'm going to add another bone that is going to uh, control the eyes to make them tilt down and up uh, for angry and sad type of eyes. Now this is not a tutorial about how to uh, create the angry and sad eyes or any of the eye expressions, but um, it's more to show you some tips about these uh, creating the smart bone dials. But notice here um, what I'm doing is I'm playing around with the, these different ways of doing expressions. And so I've already created actions that have expressions. Now you don't need to do that, I'm just telling you that I already have them. So the point there, one of the tips is I'll show you as you're creating the smart bone dial that you can actually insert um, actions if you already have them. Okay, so let's make a smart bone dial. So what I'm going to do is all of these dials, um, as I move the head, I want the dials to move with the head. So I'm going to make sure that they are uh, children of that head bone. So the same thing is true for the new bone that I'm going to make, and I'm going to put it right over here, and I'm going to press shift and then click and drag up. Now the head bone is a little bit um, off to the left, so I, I'm actually not going to use shift there. I'm going to just go straight up. Now I'm going to change the name of that bone to I Angry Sad. Now, this is called camel case type of spelling up here, and uh, you can do it however you like, but that's my particular preference. Um, but specifically what I want to show you is when I think about this bone, as I turn it to the left, I want it to give the angry eye, and as I turn it to the right, I want it to be the sad eye. And so that's how I do the names. I do the names um, as it's turned to the left, and this bone is going to be, the brows will be down, and if I turn it to the right, they'll be up. Um, same thing for uh, curious, sad, those kinds of things. So that's how I do the naming. Okay, now I'm going to take this bone and turn it into a smart bone dial. But here's an important thing. I don't know if it happens in the other versions of Anime Studio, but definitely in version 11.2. Um, when I go to bone and I say make smart bone dial, I'm going to go here now, in this particular case, I'm going to use negative 45 and 45 for my angles. You can do whatever you want. Um, and in this particular case, I only need 24 frames. And I'm not going to separate the action, so I'll show you a little bit about that. I'm going to click on OK. Now here's the thing to watch. That bone will move. Well, actually in this case, it looks like it didn't move. Uh, there it is. So I zoomed in and it moved. So that's a bug apparently in the, in the code. So that's the thing that I wanted you to see. That it will move over here. So all I have to do is use the uh, tool to bring it back over where I need to do, uh, where I want it to be, and rotate it up like I want it to be. And I'm going to use that shift to make it come up. I'm going to zoom back in and again put it in the right place that I'm looking for. And zoom it here. So the important point here about this first tip is that um, these bones, when you, when you uh, actually change the parenting, it can move the bones. So you need to be aware of that. Now the other thing that you want to be aware of when I look in the action, um, the angles may not be where they should be. So see, it, it changed the angles. Um, that's kind of a pain. I don't really know why that happens. Again, it's probably a bug. So it should be to the, all the way to the left here and all the way to the right at 24. So at frame 1, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change that angle. Now look, I drag and it doesn't seem to drag. Again, that's another bug. But I'm going to come back the second time and drag it and it will work. So again, that's some bugs that happen there. Now I come back to 24 and make sure it's at the right place. But, notice it doesn't get there until kind of like the last, I, I, I mean it stays there for quite a while. So at 24, what I really want to do is I want to take it off, again, one, the first time it didn't work, second time it does, and I come back. So now as I drag the slider, notice that it goes all the way from all the way left to all the way right. 
So um, you just need to be aware of that. That's the, the second tip. Now, another point is that in many of the tutorials, including some of my tutorials, uh, we recommend that you use uh, linear uh, for the uh, type of keyframe. In this particular case, um, I actually am going to use smooth. Um, it, I just need to make sure that the type of keyframe that's associated with these angle, the bone angle, is the same type of keyframe that I use for the uh, uh, positions of the eye features. So, you know, you're, the, depending upon the smart bone dial that you're making and what you're doing, you may need a different uh, key type, but I'm going to use smooth here. Now, the third tip that I want to show is that this is a particular bone where I'm not using two different um, actions associated with the bone, even though it's going uh, negative and positive. Um, I'm using one action. Now, when I do that, what I want to do is I want to make sure that right in the middle of my movement, I want to have the position of the bone um, and the position of all the features exactly the same as it is in the normal situation when it's straight up. That's what I want to have. So I'm going to copy those two key, that keyframe right there, um, and I'm going to paste it in. So now uh, that's what we're, we've we've got in the middle. So that bone is in the same place now. Um, we'll show you a little bit more about that, but that's pretty important. Now the next thing that I want to show is that I'm actually, in doing these uh, facial features, I want them to see exactly what's happening, and sometimes it's helpful to turn on the onion skins. So you can turn on the onion skins, and as we zoom in here you can see that the onion skins show us the position of the features, and I've got uh, different uh, ones at different places. Let me drag this one over here to the middle so you can see the position of those eyes. And when I look at the onion skin settings, I'm using outlines only, I'm not using relative frames, selected layer only, and I don't have draw behind set on, so it's important to be aware of that. Now let me go, for example, we see all of these things, but if I were just looking at the eyebrows, okay, um, and lids, or just the pupils, my onion skins are just showing uh, the particular layer that I have selected. So that's uh, a helpful feature. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the bone layer. And what I'm going to do here, let me expand a little bit more of the timeline so I can see it uh, a little bit better. And what I'm going to focus on right now, I'll drag this over a little bit more. Well, I'm not going to, uh, I'll think it's better to see the whole zoom in face. I'm not going to worry about the bone, whether you can see the bone, because we've already checked the angles. Um, but what I'm going to do right now is remember this bone is going to control uh, angry and sad eyes. So what I want to make sure is, I want to make sure in the middle it's going to be in that normal eye position. So in this particular case, uh, I've got normal eyes. Let's find the eyes normal. Okay. So I want the eyes to be normal. Now in this case, the bone should actually be controlling just the eyes and it shouldn't control pupils, and it shouldn't control the uh, eyebrow. Uh, that's what I'm, I'm wanting to do here. So I'm going to put eyes normal, and I'm going to insert that in the middle. Okay, so what that did is on the brows and lids, notice, let's take a look here at what's going on, because I've got brows and lids, and then eyes, it's created keyframes there. So that makes sure that when we're on frame 12, it's going to be the normal eye. The pupils, there are no uh, keyframes there because I don't want it to affect the pupils. Now I've got a layer of brows and lids, and I'm not going to go into the details about this. Uh, it's just the construction of this particular eye. That's the way Liz was done, and I just, you know, that's how I have it set up um, because I want uh, eyes eyes here is the, just really the white part of the eye and it's masking the pupil. Um, but in any case, what I want to happen here is I want for this bone, I don't want it to control the brows. Now notice that I have all the brow points selected. That's just the way it, it happened to be because I've been working with brows. And notice here that we don't have any red uh, lines. That means that there are no keyframes 
associated with the browse. So that's actually good. Um, and if I were to take uh, the select all tool and select just the eye points, we'll notice now there are red keyframes. So what this is showing us, this is proving to us that only um, the eye um, lids are being affected uh, by this bone and that's exactly what I want. So I have confirmed that we are just dealing with the normal position of the eye. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my bone layer and I'm going to go to the first frame and what I want here is an angry um, eye. Now unfortunately in my actions I haven't created eyes that are angry but I have an expression that's angry. Uh, and my expression, it doesn't deal with the mouth, um, it only deals with the eyes and the eyebrows. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that expression though. I click on it and I um, insert a copy. And you'll notice it narrows these eyes just a little bit and it makes the eyebrows in an angry position. And now you can start to see uh, the effect. And so let's kind of go to the brows and lid and what we see the eyebrows, red is where it used to be, and green is where it is now. And the lids, you see green uh, is uh, the future, okay? So um, this is what's, what's happening with this action. Well, it's okay for the eyebrows, that's what I want to have happen, but I, I, I mean the eyelids, but I don't want the eyebrows. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the selection tool and I'm going to select all of those uh, points. I'm selecting all the points for all the eyebrows and I'm going to erase uh, those keyframes, the, the ones that are red, only the ones that are red. So now the eyebrows are unaffected. Um, again with the pupils, nothing's been affected so that's right. And then eyes, yes, I want all the eyes to be affected. So that's what I did here. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the bones and I'm going to go to the last one. And the reason I'm always going back to the bone layer is when I insert from there, it's going to make sure that it inserts all of the different layers. So now I'm going to do the expression for sad. Okay, so let's find the expression for sad and I'm going to insert that there. Again, I don't, I didn't, I don't think I had eyes sad. Maybe to, uh, I could have done eyes sad and that's really what I should have done. Um, but again, with the expression, uh, it's going to affect the eyebrows as well. So I'm going to go in here to the brows and uh, pupils. And again, I've just had, since I was just working with the eyebrows, I don't want those affected, so I'm going to delete those keyframes, the ones that are red again, because since we have all these points selected, the red one is shown us with the selected points, keyframes associated with the selected points, and I've only selected um, the eyebrow points. And there we go. Now we see that in the past, the normal situation is what these red outline shows, and sad is what we have now. Again, I'm going to check the pupils. The pupils haven't been affected, um, and the eyes have been affected. That's the way that I want it. Um, so now, to do the test, I'm just going to scrub my little pointer, and it should be angry as eyes are down, and then sad eyes are up, and that's what we have. So it, it works appropriately, and so the, that's how I did that. So hopefully those are some helpful tips. Now the last thing, of course, is go back to the main line. I'm going to turn off the onion skins, and I'm just going to uh, show the angry and sad eyes. Check it out to make sure it works. Angry, sad, okay. And uh, we've got these together. This allows me, having separate control for the eyes and the eyebrows and everything, it allows me to have a greater range of expression. So I'm going to come down to angry eyes and uh, brow down. It takes me to the angry, so we get that angry kind of look. But I can also give it a kind of a, a different mixture there. And for the sad, I can give you a, a sad eyes with sad eyebrows. So that's how I'm. Uh, you know, 
using those bones, but again, the main point was to show those hints about uh, dealing with the smart bone tiles. Hope that's helpful.